In this video, we're looking at circle theorems. I am going to run through seven rules, explaining each of them one by one. And it's a good idea to write these down as you go. So with each one, there's going to be some text. And if you're asked to give reasons for your answer in a question, that is an example of the text you could write. Let's look at this first one. It says two tangents from the same point are equal. So a tangent is a straight line that just touches the circle. It doesn't go through it, it just touches it. And so if we draw two tangents from a, the same point, so here's a point, we've got two tangents drawn from it, and those two lengths will be equal. So from the point to where the tangent touches the circle, that length will be equal to the other one's length. So two tangents from the same point are equal in length. A tangent meets a radius at 90 degrees. So again, we've got a tangent drawn here. And where the radius is drawn to meet the tangent, so they touch at the same point, they are perpendicular. They make a 90 degree angle. So a tangent meets a radius at 90 degrees. And if we'd drawn the tangent somewhere else and drawn a radius to meet it somewhere else on the circle, that would still be 90 degrees. So tangent meets radius at 90 degrees. Angles in the same segment are equal. So a segment, so if we've got a circle and a straight line drawn in the circle, which is a chord, we can say we've got a segment here. So a chord splits the circle into two segments. We've got a segment here, a green segment, and I'll draw a purple segment down here. So in this example, in this theorem, we're looking at angles that are made from these two points. And any angles made from these two points, as long as they're in the same segment, are going to be equal. So I'm going to take that line out. So that line split it into two segments. And we can say this angle and this angle are equal. They come from the same points. We could also say that these two angles come from the same points as well. They're also in the same segment, so they are also equal. We could use other words instead of segment here. We could say from the same arc, which means this curved bit. This is an arc. So two angles from the same arc are equal, or two angles from the same chord are equal. But what they all mean is two angles that come from the same two points are equal, as long as they're in the same segment. As long as one doesn't go up and the other one down like this. So as long as they're in the same segment, they are equal. The angle at the centre is twice the angle at the circumference. So again, we've got angles coming from the same points, angles in the same segment. And this time we're told that the one at the centre is double the one at the circumference. So from these two points, any angle that goes to the centre is double any angle that goes to the circumference. So we could have an angle drawn over here, that would still be going to the circumference. It could be over here, that would still be going to the circumference. So the angle at the center is double the angles at the circumference. The angle at the center is twice the angle at the circumference. An angle in a semicircle is 90 degrees. So here we've got a diameter of the circle. We could also say an angle from a diameter is 90 degrees. Same thing, an angle in a semicircle is 90 degrees. So we've got a diameter here. 
So the angle that it makes is a right angle, a 90 degree angle. Opposite angles in a cyclic quadrilateral add up to 180 degrees. So a cyclic quadrilateral is a four-sided shape inside a circle. So each of the corners, each of the vertices of this shape, of this four-sided shape, touch the edges of the circle, touch the circumference of the circle. So that's a cyclic quadrilateral. And the two opposite angles, so this red angle and this green angle, they are opposite angles. They add up to 180 degrees. And so would the other two angles. So the green angle and the red angle add up to make 180 degrees. And the alternate segment theorem. So the alternate segment theorem says that if we've got a tangent, again, and a chord drawn here, a tangent and a chord, the angle between the tangent and the chord is the same angle that's in the alternate segment. So the alternate segment is the other segment. So as I said before, this is one segment. This blue bit is one segment. This green bit is another segment. So the our angle that we've got here is equal to the angle made in the alternate segment. So not the blue segment, that's the one it's in, the green segment. So whenever we've got a triangle in a circle that touches a tangent, we've got the alternate segment theorem. So we could also say that this purple angle here, again between a chord and a tangent, is equal to an angle in the alternate segment. So these two purple angles are equal and these two red angles are equal. That is the alternate segment theorem. Okay, let's look at some questions now. So we've got questions here, two questions here. If you feel able to give them a go, otherwise just keep watching and I will go through them. Question one, find the size of angle X. So let's look at our diagram. What do we know? Well, we've been given an angle, 50 degrees BAC. And we can see we've got two tangents coming from the same point. So two tangents coming from A. So we've got a tangent AB and a tangent AC. And two tangents from the same point are equal. So I'm going to write down two tangents from the same point are equal. What does that mean? Well, it means we've got an isosceles triangle here. ABC is an isosceles triangle. And angles at the base of an isosceles triangle are equal. So we've got two equal lengths in an isosceles. The other length's called the base. And the angles at the base are equal. So we can find out what these angles are. So 180 minus 50 is 130. And that's both the angles added together. So half of 130 is 65. So how can we find x? Well, we have a radius and a tangent as well. So a radius meets a tangent at 90 degrees. So radius meets tangent at 90 degrees. A radius and a tangent are perpendicular. So this is a 90 degree angle. OB is a radius. It goes from the center to the circumference. AB is a tangent. So this must be a 90 degree angle. So we can find X 
by doing 90, take away 65, so that's 25 degrees. Question two. What have we got here? So we can see we've got a cyclic quadrilateral. So a four sided shape inside a circle. And we've also got an angle at the center. So to find X, we can say the angle at the center is twice the angle at the circumference. So angle at the center is twice the angle at the circumference. So 160 is twice x. 160 is twice x. So half of 160 is 80 degrees. So x is 80 degrees. How about y? So if we ignore the angle at the centre now, and just look at the cyclic quadrilateral. So just looking at this shape now, we know the opposite angles add up to 180 degrees. So opposite angles in a cyclic quadrilateral add to 180 degrees. So 180 take away 80 is 100. So why is 100? We could have also, if we wanted to do it differently, said that the angles around the point make 360 degrees. So 360 take away 160 is 200. And then we could have used the angle at the center is twice the angle at the circumference again. Okay, another two questions. So let's look at question three. Find the size of angle X. And again, we've got a tangent here. AB is a tangent. And we've got a radius OB. So the tangent meets the radius at 90 degrees. A tangent and a radius are perpendicular. So now we've got angles in the triangle to find X. Angles in the triangle add up to 180. So we've got 180 minus 90, which is 90. And then minus 28 which is 62 degrees. So X is 62 degrees. How can we find Y? So we've got angles in a straight line add up to 180. So 180 take away 62 is 118 degrees. And then we've got an isosceles triangle. So OC is a radius. It goes from the center to the circumference. OB is a radius. It goes from the center to the circumference. So the angles at the base of this triangle, the isosceles triangle are equal. So 180 take away 118 is 62. We've already worked that out. And if we half 62, we get 31 degrees. So Y is 31 degrees. So angles in a straight line add up to 180 and angles at the base of an isosceles triangle are equal. Question four, find the sides of angle ABC. So here we've got a cyclic quadrilateral. So we've got a four-sided shape inside a circle. That's called a cyclic quadrilateral. The opposite angles in a cyclic quadrilateral add up to 180 degrees. 
So ABC is opposite 68. So 180 minus 68 is 112 degrees. And the reason is the opposite angles in a cyclic quadrilateral add to 180 degrees. How about the size of angle AOC? So we've got 112 here. AOC. So that's this angle here. And we can use the angle at the centre is twice the angle at the circumference. So these angles come from the same segment. So if we draw a line here, we can see that AOC and 68 come from the same segment. So the angle at the centre is twice the angle at the circumference. So 68 times 2 is 136 degrees. So the angle at the centre is twice the angle at the circumference. And the last two questions. Question five, write down the size of angle BED. BED, so we can see we've got an angle in a semicircle, an angle from the diameter. So BD is a diameter. It goes through the center and from the circumference to the circumference. An angle in a semicircle is 90 degrees. Or angle from a diameter is 90 degrees. And find the size of angle ABE. ABE, that's this one here. And this is the alternate segment theorem. So 42 is equal to ABE because of the alternate segment theorem. We could have worked out differently. But we can see here we've got a chord meeting a tangent. So any angle that comes from this chord now will be equal to the angle made by the chord and the tangent. We could have said, we could have done angles in a triangle to work out this one and then take it away from 90 degrees because the tangent meets a radius at 90 degrees and we would have got the same answer. Question six, find the size of angle AOD. Where's AOD? AOD, that's this one here. And we've got two angles. Well, we've got angles in the same segment. The angle at the center is twice the angle at the circumference. So we've got 255s, which is 110. So the angle at center is twice the angle at circumference. And find the size of angle ABD. ABD. And angles in the same segment are equal, or angles from the same chord are equal, or from the same arc are equal, any one of those. So it's 55 degrees because angles in the same segment. are equal.